Hey everybody, Anthony here from Crazy Tech Lab and today AMD is launching its B450 chipset for its second generation Ryzen CPUs. So as you can see I've got here Gigabyte brand new B450 Aorus Pro and um, that's a uh, obviously it's AM4 compatible. It's compatible with both first gen and second gen Ryzen CPUs. And uh, what I'll be doing today is just running through a few of its features as well as looking at what new features uh, you get with the B450 chipset compared to the older B350 chipset. So which one should you go for if you're not you know quite able to stretch out to an X470 or X370 motherboard? So to start with then. I'll just uh, bring up the table so you can see all the new features and uh, B450 doesn't really offer that much more compared to B350 um, but what you want to take uh, note of are the options at the bottom in red which you can see here courtesy of this table provided by Gigabyte and um, the key one is Precision Boost Overdrive. Now this is a new feature that's been introduced with AMD's second generation Ryzen processors and uh, what it amounts to is uh, basically you get a, a small overclock uh, by just uh, tweaking a few settings in the EFI or in uh, AMD's Ryzen Master and uh, it just provides a bit more of a, of a boost across the core range so whether you're whether you're going to be loading three four or eight cores on an AMD Ryzen CPU you will see better performance than you will at stock speed um, the reason that AMD has done this is that if you're overclocking its Ryzen CPUs, um, you invariably end up with a slightly lower frequency if you're overclocking all cores compared to the new boost frequencies thanks to the improved uh, boosting algorithms. So the reason behind Precision Boost Overdrive is that when you apply Preci Precision Boost Overdrive, um, what will actually happen is you'll still retain those really high boost frequencies uh, provided by AMG's second, gen uh, sorry, second generation CPUs. But you can also get an increase in, um, you know, two, three, four, and up to eight core uh, loading performance. So, say for example, you're rendering a video, you'll see better performance if you enable Precision Boost Overdrive. However, if you do an all-core overclock, a manual overclock, you will lose the lightly threaded performance that you gain from, uh, you know, XFR2 and Precision Boost 2. So that's the whole idea behind Precision Boost Boost Overdrive. It's only compatible with AMD's second generation processors. That's they're the only processors that you get Precision Boost Overdrive on. And you will need a X470 or B450 chipset motherboard to access it, officially anyway. So what you're getting here is a motherboard that's potentially got a bit more performance than B350. So that's worth bearing in mind, especially if you're using a second generation Ryzen processor. And uh, moving on down that list then, you get AMD's Store MI technology as well. That is something that is that does not come with AMD's X370 or B350 chipset motherboards, at least according to uh, Gigabyte's table here. So Store MI, essentially it takes, it combines um, as volumes that you might have on a hard disk and an SSD, perhaps a super fast NVMe uh, PCI Express SSD as well. And it will combine those, uh, you know, a hard disk and an SSD into a single volume, but it will or move your regularly used data onto the faster storage medium for example your PCI Express uh, NVMe SSD and what that does it basically gives you the best of both worlds it will give you the uh, the larger storage larger cheaper storage um, that's, pro that's provided by your hard disk but with all your regularly used files and data on the SSD you'll be getting faster access speeds so it's a useful feature to have and uh, if you have got you know that faster storage you can also tap into your RAM as well for you know even faster access speeds um, on, on some on some uh, systems but for now um, it's worth bearing in mind that you know this feature is only available on B450 and not on B350. So what I'll do now is just quickly run through some of the features on the actual Gigabyte board that we've got here. So this is the uh, B450 Aorus Pro from Gigabyte and uh, there's a whole bunch of motherboards being released today from Asus. ASRock, Gigabyte, MSI, you know the usual, the usual suspects and uh, probably the most eye-popping thing to include to be included here this is a hundred hundred pound probably around a hundred dollar motherboard probably a bit more in the US I think probably more akin to sort of hundred and ten dollars hundred and twenty dollars maybe um, but you get an integrated IO panel this is a, this is a really big deal for me because you know I build you know dozens and dozens of, uh, of PCs a year for features and that kind of thing and the one thing I hate 
is the integrate is the uh, IO shields, the separate IO shields, because you invariably cut your fingers on them. They don't quite fit properly, and they're just a pain to use. So the fact that Gigabyte is including integrated IO shields now, even with its cheaper motherboards, is a really really good move. So kudos to Gigabyte for for doing that. So you also get full fat Realtek. 1220 audio and you get all the uh, audio ports there the six audio port uh, audio outputs including optical and you get usb 3.1 type c there as well as well as a type a port at the top so the board itself um it has ha has run into a few issues online uh, pr uh, before its launch mainly down to the uh, the power circuitry so gigabyte touts this as a eight plus three phase uh, vrm design but due to the fact that there aren't quite enough high side MOS MOSFETs on this board, um, there's not quite enough um, gadgetry, gadgetry going on up there on the, on the top of the board to offer you know, eight phases. So what you're basically looking at is a four phase motherboard here. And unfortunately, I did run into a few issues, uh, mainly in regards to cooling with this motherboard. So if you overclock the Ryzen 7 2700X, for example, and uh, you overclock it to the max. I think you know I've managed to get about 4.2 gigahertz out of mine uh, across all f all eight cores. Um, what I did find is that under sustained heavy load across all eight cores, it did run into some throttling. Um, so and that did appear to be from the VRMs overheating, and um, you know that could be down to the power phase, uh, the reduced number of power phases being you know slightly less efficient, that kind of thing. Um, but you know, I only noticed that when I was running all eight cores under heavy load in Prime 95. Um, and with the CPU overclocked. If the CPU was at stock speed, absolutely no problem. If, there, if I applied a slightly lower uh, overclock, no problem. And if I was in games or short benchmarks, again, no problem. So just something to be aware of uh, if you are planning to go, you know, pedal to the metal and uh, apply a, um, a maximum overclock and use it in multi-threaded uh, content creation, that kind of thing, you may run into a few issues. Um, other things to like about the board, you get two M.2 heat sinks, one at the top and one at the bottom. Now the bottom one doesn't offer full PCI Express uh, 3.0 times four bandwidth. So, and it also doesn't support SATA SSDs. So I'm kind of at a loss as to what that port, uh, as to what you'd actually use that port for, given that you'll be limiting modern uh, PCI Express SSDs like Samsung's 970 Evo, that kind of thing. So the only port that you kind of want to use is this one here because that port offers SATA M.2 support as well as PCI Express NVMe um, full speed bandwidth for those faster SSDs as well. So other than that, it's a pretty good board. Um, there's no USB 3.1 header on the board. So, you know, some of the newer cases, they do come with USB 3.1 Type-C header, uh, 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 well, cables for headers. Um, but other than that, it's a fairly solid board. Um, you don't get manual voltage control in the BIOS in terms of an absolute voltage, so you can't just type in a voltage and away you go. You have to use uh, what's called an offset, so you have to tell how much uh, extra voltage or lower voltage you want to use, which is just a bit fiddly compared to being able to type in an absolute figure, I find. Um, that's about it as far as the board goes. Just a really quick overview here. It's mainly been about AMD's B450 chipset. So... Um, if you'd like to see more about the chipset and uh, what it kind of introduces, you can see my thought and my article over, over on Forbes, which I've linked to below. And uh, as I say today, AMD is launching its B450 chipset, so you'll see a whole load of new motherboards at more reasonable prices than its uh, current X470 chipset, which uh, supports both first gen and, rise, and second gen Ryzen CPUs, of course. So head over to my Forbes article for more information, and I'll hopefully be back with uh, a couple of more motherboards uh, B4, B450 motherboards that is uh, soon to take a look at those and um, that's it from me today just a really quick overview of the new chipset at chipset and this board um, which I'd like to say thanks to uh, Gigabyte for sending to me and uh, I'll be back with more videos and features thanks a lot <laughs>